can see the man, you can hear the man asking what happened and the lady said nothing. This time around, the lady has opened her mouth so that the spirit was gone. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Complete deliverance, you would say. So, uh, tell us, you are really sweating. So it's not easy, eh? You men of God, the people are trying. It's not easy work, bro. <laughs> I carry on for you people. You try, you try, you are, you are trying so much. It's so not since easy. after the deliverance, tell us what are the changes in the life of your sister? A lot changes because when I came that very day, the spirit, I was seeing her as an old woman. But in the morning, when I saw her, oh, so beautiful, I said, glory be to God. So that this demon that is hiding the beauty of this, my sister, ever since, I said, thank God. I said, about you sleep well. He said, sleep, she sleeps like a baby. Mm -hmm. Just like a baby. Don't even know when they break. They will go, go and wake her. They wake her in the morning before she wake up. Shall we clap for Jesus Christ? Okay, tell us, once again, what really gave you this strong courage to embark on you? Have not, you have never been to deliverance school, have you? No. What gave you that uh, courage to continue with that deliverance when she started manifesting? Yeah, what gave me the courage? Because before I start this, this mission of deliverance, I pray to God. I say, give me the courage. So that courage was in me. Even after she delivered herself, she said, when I was coming, she saw fire. Mm. I was coming. She said, ah. the spirit now tell her that, ah. see fire, they come. Oh. See fire, see fire is coming. Who is that? She said, my brother. I said, say, run, run, run. Fire is coming. She sees fire. I see the picture, the body of Prophet Snow Prophet Dosha beside me, walking with me. Because the sticker is in my pocket, front pocket sticker, back sticker. Anointed water everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere, because that is the that is the garment of the weapon. So you I'm were going to go and fight battle. So you I were to putting fight. on the whole armor of God. <laughs> Everything. Okay. So so that's how I go. So hmm. I really thank God. Hmm. Thank God. Good because thank God. I, I I did not believe that I will be the one that will deliver my mom. That we heal my mom and deliver my own sister. Mm -hmm. They tell me I will never believe, but mm -hmm. God make it possible. God is great. Shall we clap for Jesus Christ once again? <laughs> Glory be to God. So, can we just hear a word or two from the sister? Wow, can you introduce yourself? Tell us your name. My name is Ufuma. My name is Ufuma. My Emmanuel. My name is Ufoma. I've been to many churches. Okay, the man beside you who is it's my brother, senior brother. Same father and same mother. Mother. Okay. I've been to many churches. Okay, tell us how this is started. This this okay. Only twenty two. No, tell us when this evil spirit started operating in your life. My childhood. From childhood. Yes. What happened? For thirty five years now. Mm -hmm. I'm not thirty five years. Okay. My mother So tell us what kind of family background did you come from? How did this spirit enter your life? Okay. My mother worship I do. Okay. You worship idol. If you want to get bed to any of us, we kill goats. Okay, anytime she wants to um, give birth to a baby, if she will goats. sacrifice goats, uh, goats. Mm -hmm. to the idol. To the idol, Konovu. Okay. So, and that I was how all of you were delivered? Yes. Okay, as you were growing up, tell us what begins to happen. As I'm growing life. up, the age of 12 years, I break my virginity. I'm so stubborn, beating men. Beating girls, I can beat five women once, six. So, that's so the spirit of dragon, so start using me. Hmm. If I quarrel with you, for night you will fall sick. 
you will come and beg. After begging me, I say, okay, go for giving you. I say, you don't, you don't know me, you are quiet with me. So you don't, you don't know that I'm a dragon in my mind. Mm. So I've been to many churches. And at school, how did it I did go to school. You? I did go to affect my school. It all my, your school. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, all, all of them have been to school. But me, this, this spirit affecting my school. I did go to school. Age of 12 years, I used to run, sleeping outside. Mm. My senior son, I get back to my senior son, the age of 16 years, mm. in outside. Okay, how did it affect your marriage? Marriage, I affect my marriage so much because I'm not in about TV gate now. I have four children, TV gate. Three husbands. TV husband. Mm. This one will go, he will leave me, the spirit will pursue him. Another one will go. The last one, my last baby is 10 months. I've lived that man too. Mm. So how about your spiritual life, your dream, what are the things you used to see? My dream, I used to see one huge man, used to come and sleep with me. I used to see one huge man, used to sleep with me. I see in my dream, I see some guests call me princess. They, they used to call you princess? Princess. In the kingdom, in the evil in, kingdom? Yes. Okay. The age of 17 years, I get married there. Hmm. I'm married hmm. in the kingdom. Okay, so tell us, that very day your brother brought the morning water, prayed for your mother, and she started walking. What happened to you? When my brother is coming, I saw her. Huh? I said, sure. I don't saw her face, so, but back. Was collecting a bag in on the side of the car. I don't see fire is coming out for the body, the back. Fire. I said, sure. Who is this strong man? Many pastors have tried for supply, no one. I said, this man is a strong man. I said, tough face me, my brother. I said, sure. This guy, carry fire. Yes, for the call. I want to see this guy fire for everybody who wants to. I said, this is my man born. He called a come. I called refused to open the door. Once my man called go, my man said, we are going to open the door for your brother. I said, open the door. He said, for my alpha. I said, sure. Fine, I dropped my face down. I so said, you couldn't fine. look at your brother? No, I couldn't look at him. Okay, for a moment, for a moment, our sister is ex explaining her encounter before her deliverance that immediately her elder brother, standing beside her now, came with a mission to pray for the mother who was sick and could not walk with the morning water. As he was alighting from the vehicle and she saw him from a distance, she became scared of what she saw. She didn't know it was her brother because she saw fire all over him, not knowing that it was the morning water that he was bringing out from the car that was bringing out the spiritual fire that she began to see. So when he turned his face, she later discovered that it was her brother. And she said, I've never seen my brother with this kind of fire. What is happening? So when the brother came close and was asking her question, where is mama? She said she couldn't behold the face of the brother because of the fire that was all over him due to the morning water he was carrying. Okay, so when uh, your brother started praying for your mother, what happened to you? He started praying for my mother in the Danny side. So they say in Jesus, he said in Jesus' name, I say amen. As he sprayed the water, small that touched my body. At that place, fire. I say, ah, nah, very powerful water this boy carry. I won't cut the escape. I say, as he did pray, I come on run. I reach the gate, fire. I will put the window, fire. I say, yeah, I will pass here. I say, no place to pass. I said, but I want to run. The spirit in me say, run, princess. Run, because I'm finished. Run. What spirit is that tell me? Don't run, no. Today you receive your anointing, your breakthrough. Don't go anywhere. I say, ah. What spirit is that me? Say, don't go anywhere. Because okay. The other spirit that say, carry the baby. You will not notice you. I'm not carrying the baby. They are praying though, I'm in the parlor. I like me. I didn't hear that place where they are praying. You know. Okay, you were far, you were in another I'm far for them. That does they have Amen. Amen, but I didn't hear them. Ah. As it's coming, it's true. He said for my 
and say, I carry the baby. I want to go outside. I say, oh, you stop there. Who are you in this body? Now spray the water. Don't show my face. He said, I want you to leave this body. Nah. Hmm. I said, stop. Fire. I don't see the thing I remember. Fire, fire. All it. the rest, I didn't remember how I manifest. All that I didn't remember anyone. Again. But I just saw the fire. Only Allah, fire, fire. Only that I remember. And since after that deliverance, tell us what are the things that begin to happen in your life? My life. Oh, I'm sleeping where? I don't know that light is good because all the years I'm in darkness. Light is so good. If I look me, I say show. I for my be this one. Because for supply they call me for my leggy. I they beat everybody. And no girl don't know me for supply. I said I for my call fine like this. I say God. So how were you looking before when this demon was? Everybody coming? hates me. Hmm. Over where my brother prayed for me on the twenty four. Over where my brother prayed for me on the twenty four. On the 25, one girl, I said, a show. Start for my, you call the old, though. Then on the 25, I said, show. So you call fine. I said, 24 and 25, not the same, no, for my mind. So I call fine. And I say, hey, thank you. So thank you, mean you a Jesus. Day, a day to your deliverance is a sister saw you and said on you are looking on the 24th oh, on the 24 on the 23 okay the sister said i'm looking old you look very old lame mm -hmm. i say eh. and the next day after the deliverance she saw you again saw me again susu stuff for man who you fight to do where do you rob oh you yeah, don't no, come come aside oh so you fine they don't go who knows you don't bomb for children i say so now my sister now so now god walk I said, if not be God, I go take fine. Shall we put our hands God. together for Jesus? <laughs> and now you are very happy, you are free. I am free. I can do money tonight. I will not eat anything. Hmm. I'm very happy. Hmm. Before money tonight, I will date to the, I will sit down in the joint, drinking all this ogogoro. Drinking Ogogoro, smoking cigarettes, those living rough life. Mm. But now, nah, not till like that again. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. So, we know you have so much to say, but time is not on our side. So, Madam, tell us what advice, just short word of advice you have for people listening to your deliverance, to your testimony, and particularly what can you say about this morning water? Yes, the money water is free. The advice to the people who worship me now, if you believe in God, give your life to Christ. If you believe, God will only really make it for you. Mm. Because I don't believe say for 35 years, I will come somebody today. Mm. Let me once if I used to condemn myself. Mm. But now, I don't know that I'm a beautiful lady like this. Shall we clap for Jesus Christ? So we thank God, thank God for everything. So, sir, we want to glorify God for what he has done in your life and for this wonderful deliverance. And also, just to let you know, you know, we are enjoying the grace of God. And uh, God can use anyone to carry out his, uh, his purpose, his mission. So for you and also for people all over the world who are watching you, when you are here and you receive the money water or any faith tools from the anointed, from the anointed man of God, is for you to go back, use it to deliver yourself and also to deliver your family. So that should not be a reason why you should now believe that the anointing has come. You now begin to form your own church because if you don't have the calling, you are engaging on a dangerous mission. So it is the grace of God in the morning water that you have used to deliver yourself and deliver your family and begin to appreciate God Almighty for that grace and God will bless you and enrich you in Jesus name. Shall we clap for Jesus Christ?
in the time of Apostle Paul, anything that came into contact with him were taken to those who were demon possessed, taken to those who were sick, taken to those who were poor. They were blessed, healed, and delivered. And the same thing is happening in our generation as it was. So it is. The same miracle, deliverance, and healing is going on in our generation through the medium of money water. If you have not received... going to watch the screen of our television set and then witness and see for ourselves how the deliverance took place and how the person in question was delivered and restored back to life. God bless you as you watch in Jesus' name. All over your body, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, every part of your body, pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Who are you? Who are you? What do you want with us? What do you want with us? How many are you in this body? What do you want with us? How many are you in this body? Ah. Huh? We're 12. 12. Who is, who, is, who is number one? We have fathers. Have fathers. Uh, from generations to generations. Uh, she must leave us alone. And we'll leave her alone. She must bow to leave us alone. And we'll leave her alone. But if she continues to deceive the community, to deceive the children, we will kill her. We will kill her on the count of three. Yes, we will kill her. She survived three. She won't survive the next. We must kill her. Why do you want to kill her? Why? Why is she changing the whole village? Why is she changing things that shouldn't be changed? We are her ancestors. She is brought in all these new things. How does she change things? Oh, How? She is preaching to the children. She is baptizing them uh, with the water. And what is happening to the children? 
too many to count, 280 children. We must kill her and kill the children too. You kill the children? But yes. How many of the children are killed? We have killed four already. We have two on the list. Before the year ends, we will kill those two to make a total of six. How do, yes. How do you normally kill them? We have vowed. Yes, on how? our knees. On our altar, she must die. How, she must die. How do you kill them? How? Why? Why? How do you kill them? Why? How do you kill them? <laughs> they invoke us. They invoke us to torture her, to torment her. Right now, she can't hear with this here. She will never, 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 never again. Her part, she'll be paralyzed. She'll become porridge, porridge, porridge. I said porridge. And then uh, we will kill with an accident. She survived three already. She won't survive the next. I wish I knew. Okay, what have you done to her career? What other things have you done to her? No more. She quit her job with the U.S. government. She quit herself. She walked out. She was too sick, too sick to perform. Yet, so she feared she might get fired. I made her write a letter of resignation. She quit her job, a very, very good job. She will never, ever work again. She will never. Her degree is for nothing. It's for nothing. Who caused her to quit her job? Who caused her to quit, Who caused her to quit, to quit her job? Uh, Why did you do that? Why? Okay. Right. Because she was sending the money to the school. To the school? Yes. You mean she has school? Yes, she has a school. It's a Christian school. What is happening to the school now? <laughs> we deal with her. Then the school is no more. That's why we must kill her. Yes! She must die! <laughs> what have you done to her marriage? It's a ghost marriage. Ghost. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. We've refused her happiness. Never ever will she be happy. She will toil and work for other people. She will serve other children's children, but on her own, nothing, none of her own children. Okay. We bow on her knees. How did you enter no, this body? How did you enter this body? No children for her. She will kiss other children. How did you enter this body? How did you enter this body? How? Water. Huh? Water. We gave her drinking water in a bottle. She drank it and we attacked. She should have died on the 1st of June 2015. Yes, she should have died. She drank that water and Something went wrong. She should For how long have you been in this body? For how long? She should have died. For how long? Since she was 12. Okay, go. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come here. In Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this deliverance. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Rise up. Rise up, my sister. Lord Jesus Christ has labored you 
through the medium of the muddy water. Go and live your life to please Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? People of God, that was not good enough. Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The sister in question is standing right here in our midst. And she's here to tell us her experiences so far. The spirit she possessed, how the spirit entered her and what the Spirit has done in her life. Introduce yourself, tell us your name, and the people standing next to you. Okay, um, my name is Petra Ote Mangesha. Um, we're coming from the United States of America, but uh, originally from, I'm from Uganda, and uh, my friend here is Florence and her husband Larry. Florence is also from Uganda originally, but residing in Tulsa, Oklahoma in the United States. And uh, Larry. So um, my problem started as a child, as we've seen on the video. I'll not go so deep into narrating it. And I didn't really know that I was being pursued by ancestral spirits until when things started manifesting. It reached the climax in May 2015. May 2015, we had traveled to Uganda for a mission trip to visit the school in Uganda. I usually take a team there every year. Every once a year, I take a team from the USA to Uganda to visit the school. So in 2015 May, that was another trip. We were there for two weeks, and on our last day, I went to bed normal, and, and in the morning, I couldn't wake up. When I woke up, I couldn't walk, I couldn't see, I couldn't hear, I couldn't do anything, pretty much. I went to bed normal. And so from there began my struggle. We managed to drive from Aduku, which is where the school is, about maybe 40 kilometers, I don't know, but it took us, well, like a four hour drive to the city. And I was admitted in Kampala International Hospital for a week, and I wasn't getting better. I was, if you saw me, you would know, I wouldn't make it. So uh, my sister decided to fly me back to the States immediately. My friends had already left because our flight had already passed. So I made it to the States, got hospitalized from the airport straight to the hospital, got hospitalized for two more weeks, no improvement. They sent me home t for rehabilitation and they told me that I had to managed to live with a situation like that because they had done all kinds of tests that they needed to do and they couldn't find what the problem was. They tested me for everything and yet I still couldn't walk, I still couldn't see then and I couldn't hear. Could, Every you, could you please tell us some of the tests you did when you had this problem? I went for a test called the VNG it's an hearing test. I did it three times, and I failed it each time. The last one I did was actually this March, in March 2016, and the results came out zero out of 10 for word recognition. That means I wasn't hearing anything at all. So I had to read your lips. If you don't speak closer to my right ear, which was functioning a little bit, I couldn't understand what you were saying. And then every time I got to a noisy place like a, a supermarket or a church, I had to even stop attending my church. I was singing in the choir, I couldn't sing anymore. I could not tolerate noise, even the slightest noise. Every time I hear noise, I would get a spinning sensation. I would start spinning and fall. And so, 
I had to isolate myself for a year or more. I couldn't get out. I was grounded. Another test that they did was um, MRI. From the brain, they did the brain MRI. It came out, nothing, nothing wrong with me. They tested the eye, nothing wrong with the eye that they could see. And then eventually after a year, I went back for another MRI and they checked the neck and then they told me that I had high needed disc which was bulging out from C4, C5, C6, C7. And uh, I have that on the board there. And that was due to accidents that I had been having. I had had three consequent accidents before we, we, we had the trip. But before the trip, before the attack, I wasn't feeling any pain. And then I started getting treatment for the disc. I was supposed to go through surgery. But eventually, my friend started sending me videos from Emmanuel TV, and I started watching them, watching them. I would sit glued on it for as long as I could. I start, my neck started feeling better. So I told my neurologist that I, I'm going to postpone the surgery. So as I stand now, the surgery is still scheduled, but I had to push it and I decided, you know what, I'm going to have to go down to Scone before I do any kind of surgery. Were you, at any point, allowed to travel with all these medical conditions? Not at all. I was banned from traveling. I couldn't fly and I couldn't drive. I was banned from driving. Even up to now, as I stand here, I haven't been able to drive officially because I was told it was dangerous. It's like drunk driving. So you are danger to the people on the road and you are danger to yourself. Because the dizziness just kicks any time. So I couldn't drive, I couldn't fly, according to the doctors. Were you at any point aware that you were possessed with the spirit you were delivered from when you came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations? I only got to know that I had some spiritual issues once I started watching the videos that she was sending me from Emmanuel TV, from YouTube. I started watching the deliverance sessions, what people were going through, what was happening, and then relating to the dreams that I was having. I was eating a lot in the dream, and I was being summoned in meetings all the time with some old people in the forest, and I'm always being warned. You need to be, stop what you're doing or we're going to deal with you. So that's when I started realizing there was a problem. What other areas did this spirit that you were delivered from affect? Uh, my job, definitely. I had to leave my job just like that. I wrote a resignation letter. I was working with um, the Department of uh, Human Services in Oklahoma, and I resigned my job uh, last year because I couldn't perform anymore. I was too sick. Whenever I sat on the computer, the words would start literally like jumping up and down. I couldn't read a thing. Couldn't read my Bible. Sometimes I'd sit to watch even the very videos for Emmanuel TV, and you'd see like pictures moving all over in a crazy form that it shouldn't. And so uh, financial loss, lots of collection accounts from medical, uh, medical accounts of definitely too much debt because I had to visit like seven different specialists and all in vain. The spirit confessed that it tried to destroy your life through many accidents and try to put an end to your life. What can you say about this? Yes, I had uh, three accidents this year, back to back, back to back, the last one being in March where the MRI shows that I injured my neck and my car was totaled, written off. So the accident is very true and I always got the accident at the same spot, same spot. With all these medical conditions, did you receive any recommendation or solution from the medical doctors? No, uh, part of the recommendation were just things to make me a little comfortable like this, 
This is a noise cancelling device that when I go to a noisy place, even church when they're singing like now here, I couldn't sit even for 30 minutes. I would have to leave. So I have to wear this to reduce the noise a little bit. And uh, uh, some of them I have that. Let me get it. Before we go to this section of other items and the drug, we would like you to demonstrate to viewers all over the world how you use what you are holding and what is the use of this object. Uh, this one is a noise, sorry, it's a noise cancelling device, so I had to wear it like this all the time, wherever I go, even in the house, I had to have it on. Uh, without it, I, I would feel dizzy uh, uh, because of too much noise. It triggers the dizziness. So sitting in church like this, I would have to be like this the whole time. Even flying here in the plane, I had to wear it the whole time. Every time I tried to get it out, I would trip. And it's like I'm going to fall. The dizziness would strike. So. Have you ever encountered any situation or occasion whereby people began to ask you, um, Madam, what is this for? What are you using it for? What is it for? So many times. What did you tell them? So many times, even at the airport, the security, some airports, they'll tell me, take, it, take that off, you know, you can't wear it through security, and had to explain to them, get my letter out, I have a problem with my ear, so I cannot tolerate noise. So that's why I have this. Even in in the church, very uncomfortable. You're seated and people don't know why you're wearing that. It looks, you know, people just judge. And, and so I was really uncomfortable. It was very inconveniencing. And we can see something displayed on the table and also some reports and pictures. Can you please explain what they stand for? Um, this one here is because uh, after an accident, I injured my jaw, both jaws. So I had a condition called TMJ, which affects your jaw. And so because of that, for months and months and months, I couldn't chew anything solid. I had to feed on liquids. And then I had to wear this throughout the day. You wear it on top of your teeth like braces. I had to wear it for more than six months. I'm not, I wasn't allowed to take it off, even if, only when you're brushing and then you put it right back on. And so this affected my speech. You can't talk with this thing. You can barely talk. So uh, this is one of the devices that I was given to manage the condition. It didn't help. Next. And then these are some of my medications. This one is for migraines. I was having lots of migraine attacks. After almost every four hours, I would have a serious, serious migraine attack. So this is supposed to control it. It's called trochendi. And lots of muscle relaxants, prescription meds. I've been on this medication for over two years, and this is now reduced. After beginning to watch Emmanuel TV, I went back to the doctor and told her I was feeling better, and so she reduced it. But these were now kind of like permanent. I had to live with them. I couldn't go to bed without these two, the gabapentin and the tinizadine. This is what made me to fall asleep, at least somehow, without pain. And so, but uh, since coming to school on, on Sunday, I haven't taken one single pill from here. I have so we put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. 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 Before now, you talked about using some items like what you're holding and some things to guard your teeth and some medication. Are you still using them? No, I'm not using any of this, not even this. I don't need it. I'm not using it. Amen. Yeah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now the whole world can see that you have removed it. You are not using it at this moment. Do you still feel uncomfortable? Do you still feel noise as you used to feel before? No, I feel perfectly normal. I feel very excited for my life, excited for what God has in store for me. 
and uh, I was so excited to see them. I didn't know they would be here. And I told them, you know what, God has just brought you here to validate my testimony. There is destiny in this, so I don't need this anymore. I'm not worried. Um, functioning perfectly okay. I'm very happy more than usual. I'm having lots of smiles. I never used to have smiles. smiles. I was in so much agony. People of God, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Before now, you talked about loss of hearing. And also, you complained about poor vision and a, a whole lot of problems. How is your condition now? My condition is very good. I'm hearing, as you can see. Even when I block this ear, I can hear you. Um, no more migraines, no more headaches, no more dizziness, no more medication pills, no more muscle reluctance. I'm doing really well. I'm, do, I'm doing very, very well. And uh, as I ministered the morning water, uh, this week I got the morning water after my deliverance on Sunday, as you saw on the video, but I continued to minister it and I uh, got lots of other testimonies, lots of other testimonies, even in the school in Uganda. It's amazing. We just got partners, support coming from everywhere. And the kids, lots of kids are lining up. Parents are bringing their kids to join the school. We're running out of space. So all these things happened immediately. The morning water was administered on you and you were delivered on Sunday. Yes. We want yes. you to tell the whole world what happened to you when the morning water was administered to you. Uh, when they ministered morning water on me, I felt heat, like this heat rush all over my body and fire all over me, especially the left side. And then I started feeling pins, like there were pins coming out of my body. And so I started screaming after that. I just lost, you know, my conscience. But it was fire I, to the extent that I felt like I needed to trip and just remove my clothes. It was a lot of fire. And yes. since then, how is your condition now? Since then, uh, one of the conditions that I had, which I haven't talked about, is the endometriosis, this menorrhea, which is painful periods. That means every month as a woman, when you go through your periods, you're in pain. It's chronic, chronic dysmenorrhea. It started at the age of 14. I would get admitted in hospital almost every other month. I could not do without ibuprofen. I had to take lots and lots of them. Before I got here, I had just gone through like a week before. When I got here and started ministering the morning water, the next day, boom, clots and clots started coming out. Not a single pain, not a single pain. I did not take a pill, you know. And so, if now as I speak, everything has stopped, everything is perfect, I feel no more the pain down in my tummy, no more, everything is gone. So, a lot has been happening just within this one week in, in my life. We can see a lot of items on the board. Could you please explain to us what it stands for? Uh, this is a picture from the you know, whenever my system started flashing, when I uh, ministered the morning water, I just started getting lots and lots of clots for three days, and then it stopped. Now I'm feeling great. I feel good. The pain no more. These are the teachers at the school here, um, and these are the children, some of the children at the school in Uganda that I support. And this is the report for my hearing, hearing test. As you can see here, it says word recognition is zero out of 10. So I wasn't hearing anything at all. And then it was ringing. It, I, I was diagnosed with a condition called Meniere's. Meniere's disease is chronic. It has no, there's no treatment for it. That's what the doctor told me. There's no surgery that could fix it. And so it comes with a dizziness, with the ringing of the ear, with deafness and all that kinds of stuff. So this was in March. And then this one is the, the uh, MRI for the neck. So it shows here that I had injured my, 
I had a hernated, hernated disc bulging out from C4 to C7. I feel perfectly fine. I couldn't twist my neck. I had to turn the whole body like this. But now I can do it. It's so flexible. I don't have to prop myself up when I go to bed or when I sit in the car. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. 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 And here is the history of the dysmenorrhea and multiple fibroids and um, endometriosis. To God be the glory. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Before you tell us your advice, we would like to hear a word or two from those who have known your state before you came for deliverance. They are in the best position to tell us your condition before and what they are witnessing now after the administration of the money water. Introduce yourself, tell us your name, where you come from, and whom the lady that has just spoken is to you. My name is Florence, and this is Larry, my husband, Larry Gordney. Uh, we live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Originally, I'm from Uganda, just like Petra. And uh, I got to know Petra, I think, 11 years ago, when we had just moved to United States. So I say her condition is really true and she has a school in northern Uganda. I also come from northern Uganda. And uh, when she came back sick in June of 2015, uh, she was really sick. I mean, she couldn't walk. She had lost a lot of weight. When you look at her, her skin, the color had changed and she just you know, we thought she, you know, people thought she wouldn't make it. But I told her one thing. I said, you shall not die, but you shall live to declare the glory of God. Because the devil doesn't, the devil is messing up with the future of those children. That's why he's fighting you. Uh, to cut the long story short, uh, I introduced her to Emmanuel TV. When I came across it on YouTube, but I was watching a number of them, uh, I became addicted to it actually because I watch it day and night. Uh, so whatever I would watch, I would send her the link that watch this one, watch this one. There's nothing impossible with God. And she started watching it and, you know, praying. I would tell her, pray with the prophet. Pray with the prophet, you know. So she would pray with the prophet as, you know, pray along. And, uh, you know, she started getting better. She started getting better. And she desired to come to the Synagogue Church of All Nation here in Lagos, Nigeria. I also desired. But, I mean, she surprised me. I didn't know that she was here. We came, me and my husband arrived on Wednesday evening, and we were at the hotel. On Thursday, my husband was going to put some things in the restaurant, refrigerator, some drinks. And as I'm, I came in the restaurant, too, I was checking on my phone while walking and coming. So I looked at the, from the, her backside, and I thought, boy, somebody here in Lagos really looks like Petra. And then my husband started pointing, hey, hey, look, look, look. And then I looked, and she turned and looked at me, and I said, what? When did you get here? And she was like, my God, this is a small world. When did you come? I said, we just came yesterday. And she said, how about you? She said, I was here on Saturday. And didn't you watch Sunday? I said, this time we miss. I usually watch Sunday live. I watch. And... Um, I said, uh, this time I didn't because we were getting ready to come here, so putting things together. So I did not watch the Sunday. She said, you would have seen me if you had watched. And so anyway, I've watched now. So I testify that there's a big change. Even now as I, you know, I see her here. She is really well compared. She could not walk. She, she could not walk. And you have to hold her. Besides holding her, her husband always held her. Even if she had to go to the bathroom, the husband had to hold her to go. And everywhere. One thing I remember, 
One thing I remember they told her, they made, the medical people told her was that, you know, this is not going to be cured. You need to get used to being like this. And I said, no, that's a wrong report. We don't believe the doctor's report. We're going to believe the Lord's report, that he is our healer. So we, I thank God that she is healed and she is delivered. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Before the sister proceed, let's watch the screen and see how the sister, the condition of the sister when she was terribly sick. This was how she was, her condition. And to God be the glory, you can see the great difference. After she came to the synagogue church of four nations, and prophet T.B. Joshua sent the evangelist to administer the morning water on her, and by the grace of God, she was totally delivered and set free. What's the difference? Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Madam, she complained of loss of hearing and other ailments. What can you say about this? Oh yes, hearing, it was a problem to talk to her and the pitch, if any noise or anything, she could not come in public because of the noise. So she was always at home, uh, any high pitch would really bother her, she would have to put, you know, before they gave her that machine, she would, uh, most all the time she would have to put her hands because of high pitch. And then if you talk, you need to talk softly and gently, but then you have to have come close to her hearing. I mean, she couldn't do anything. Uh, the kids used to do laundry for her and everything. There was nothing she could do. The husband had to help her everything, with everything. The husband was the one doing it for her. And now, what can you say about her current state after her deliverance? Oh my goodness, she's a new person, even the sight, just looking at her. <laughs> what she's, can she do now that she was not doing before? Oh, walking straight, without anybody holding her, or you know, you know, she's strong. She's just the sight, you see life in her. She didn't have that life before. You what know. about the issue of hearing? Yo, she hears well. She has not complained about anything. Shall we <laughs> put our hands together for Jesus? <laughs> we would also like to hear from your husband. Sir, you're welcome to the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Jesus' name. Introduce yourself and the people standing next to you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Larry Gordney. This is my wife, Florence. We're from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, this is our first trip to Nigeria. Yes. We're having a wonderful time here. You've listened to the testimony of our sister, and we believe you have one or two words to say. What can you say concerning her testimony? I, I, that was the first time that I had really seen it. I saw a little snippet of it and it really moved me and it just shows that the power of God is so prevalent you know in this place and I, I am I am thrilled. I, I hope I can get deliverance like she did. <laughs> to God be the glory. Let's clap the one up with Jesus. Madam, we still want to hear from you. We want to hear one or two advice. You've heard it all, you've seen it all, you have received it all. We want to hear from you. What can you say? What is your advice to viewers all over the world, perhaps people who do not even know that they are possessed with contrary spirit and are going through a lot in their marriage, in their health, in their finances, and in their spiritual life. What words of advice do you have for them? Uh, my advice to, especially my friends back in the United States, and I know that some of you will be watching this YouTube video and Emmanuel TV, I know that most of them don't really believe in deliverance because it seems weird, it looks awkward, it looks embarrassing, the whole process is unpleasant. But all I can testify is that God still delivers, He still saves, and He still heals. Amen. Through the morning water, I received my deliverance. 
and there's so many other mediums that God can use. My advice is, when you yield to God, you trust Him, He's a delivering God, He is a saving God, and He's in control of your situation. There is no situation that is above the power of God. However grave it may look, however hopeless it may look, there is light at the end of the tunnel. So I just want to encourage you all to trust God, to keep leaning on Him, and stay close to Him. He will never let you down. I can testify to that. I've seen Him come through for me. He will come through for you. Hallelujah. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Before now, your businesses were down, your school was down. What can you say? Everything is really taking height. Um, back home in Aduku, in Uganda, the school, like I said, Partners are calling me, people who had turned me down for five years long, two years long. I'm getting emails even as I'm here asking me what can we do, how can we help. The support is coming through and that's the power of God. And the support in the whole village is there. People are like, you know, this is our thing. It's no longer just a Petra thing because it's changing lives and it's impacting the community to Shall the glory we put of God. Our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> we know that words are not enough for her to give thanks to God for what Jesus has done for her. And with what God Almighty has done for you through the medium of money water sent by Prophet Hibi Joshua, we are here to let you know that it is not just good enough for you to come to Jesus for deliverance, for spiritual help like this. But after you've received your deliverance, after you've received your breakthrough, you still need to make Jesus your healer, your deliverer, and your provider. By making his word the standard for your life. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.